In this video, we're going to take a look at the various formatting options for schedules. With the Schedule view active, scroll down in the Properties palette and then click Edit next to Formatting to open the Schedule Properties dialog to the Formatting tab. On the left, you have a list of your scheduled fields. And when you select one, you can then adjust the heading, the orientation, alignment. Uh, you can even do things like uh, add conditional formatting. And then depending on the parameter, you, for example, if we do like size or length, then we can do things like adjust the units or even do things like calculate totals, uh, which we'll dig into in just a second. So to begin, I will select family and type. And the heading, we could do something like change it to something conduit type. Okay, just a quick example here. And then we could say we want the heading orientation to be horizontal, and we'll keep a left alignment. But if we switch to the size, let's change the alignment to center, and then let's change the length alignment to center as well. And then click OK, and we can see some of the updates here. So once again, just basic formatting here on what we want to appear in these headers, and then how we want them aligned. Let me click Edit next to Formatting again, and let's take a look at a few more options here. So you can also set a field to be a hidden field. And for example, if I go back to the Fields tab, and we take a look at some of the parameters here, and we could, so in this case, we have both the family and type parameter. But let's say we wanted to add family and type, or depending on what the schedule is, maybe you even wanted to do a level. And really what I'm getting at here is when you have a hidden field, it's likely because you want to sort and group off of that field, but you don't actually want it to appear in the schedule. So I'm going to sort by family, then by type, then by size. And let me just change that to move the grouping down here. Uh, anyway, so then on the formatting tab, I'll select family and let's set it to be a hidden field. And then I'll click OK. And I'm going to have to readjust this a little bit and move this out a bit. Uh, but my point here is that you can add a field and you can, you can even filter off of it, sort and group off of it. But then maybe you don't even want to see it in the schedule. So that's when you would set it to be a hidden field. All right, let's go back to formatting the formatting tab one more time. And when I select length, let's take a look at a few more options. When I click field format, it opens the format dialog. And by default, it's going to use the project settings or use whatever has been specified in the units dialog. But if I deselect that, I can then change the units. So if I wanted to show it in a different way, I could, uh, or I, I could even change the rounding. So let's say I, I want to round it to the, let's just do the nearest inch. And then there are some other options here, like suppress zero feet, um, use digit grouping, suppress, anyways, various options there, depending on the units. And then let me click OK. And now you can see that our length parameters are now rounding to the nearest inch. Let's go back to the formatting tab one more time, and I will select length. And then let's look at these some of these options here at the bottom. Calculate totals. Uh, so first off, you could just do no calculation, uh, or you could calculate totals, which in this case, we are, the, the way that we are sorting and grouping in order for that length to appear, if we were to set this to no calculation, then it would just simply say varies. So if we set it to calculate totals, then we can actually see the total length. But you could also do uh, calculate minimum and maximum or calculate minimum and maximum. So let me select calculate minimum and maximum and click OK. And now let me expand that length parameter a bit you can see that it shows the, so we're still sorting based off of the family, the type, and the size. And then it's going to show us the minimum length 
for the however we're sorted in groups. So once again, in this case, the type and the size, as well as the maximum length. And so for line-based components such as conduit, cable tray, duct, pipe, walls, beams, it, so many things, right? We could then do minimum and maximum values for the length there. So lots of options when it comes to formatting. Most of what you're going, going to be dealing with are the your headings and your orientations and alignments, but there are options then to adjust units and uh, calculate totals or minimums and maximums as well. Howdy! Thanks for watching. If you'd like more free content from Click to BIM, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also have affordable subscription options at clicktobim.com where you can access all of our videos. We also have an amazing search feature that allows you to search through every single word in all of our videos to help you quickly find the answers to your questions.